Hey guys, my name's R2 and I'm going to be showing you my render settings for Sony Vegas Pro 9 and also Pro 10 also works pretty similar and it's also extrapable to uh, similar or high, higher caliber uh, editing programs so you can go ahead and do that if you've got any other better editing programs or similar editing programs but anyway without further ado um, you can see this is my preview screen right here um, just this black rectangle and um, if you've just downloaded or bought or whatever you did to get Sony Vegas Pro um, it should be like just a square not exactly a rectangle so um, you're you're gonna wanna have it into widescreen mode like this and um, to do this I will show you in a brief second but first I'm just going to show you one quick thing so um, this is just the CyberGame intro and you can see um, on the left and right side it's got um, black rectangles. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but I can see it pretty well. But anyway, there's a uh, yeah, black um, just black spaces. You could should see a bit better now. So just black spaces on the sides. I'm going to show you how to fix this after I show you uh, how to get this preview screen set up. So um, first of all, you can uh, just pause it and um, check out what I've got on here but the main things you're going to want to know is the width is at 1280 and the height is at 720 um, you're going to want to have to have the pixel aspect ratios NTSC DV widescreen which is 1.2121 and uh, yeah this is just to get it um, you know like uh, the widescreen that it is uh, clearly and um, frame rate is at 29.97 or NTSC and I've been told that YouTube renders anything above 30 frames per second or 29.97 frames per second down to NTSC settings which is 29.97 so um, yeah there's no point rendering it at 50 60 100 whatever you want to do if you're just gonna upload it to YouTube and uh, just copy the rest of the, those settings down right now um, also you can uh, type in the template right here and hit the floppy disk save button and that'll save it so you don't have to check this video again and check all the little stats and all that sort of crap um, we're not going to worry about the audio or the ruler or the summary or the audio CD because they don't really matter we just want to know the video so after you've done that apply OK whatever you need to do and it should be a big wide screen like that now to get rid of those annoying black things on the sides what you're going to want to do is right click your video hit properties and you're going to want to disable resample reduce the interlace flicker and uncheck maintain aspect ratio now what these do is um, smart resample usually um, what it is is well always what it is duh um, anyway what it does is whenever say for example you take a picture with a still image camera and um, there's a lot of movement going on so say for example you just like totally move while you're taking the picture and it'll be all blurred and stuff like that now this is like a movement blur or I forget the proper term because I'm retarded but um, that's basically what the res resample is and correct me if I'm wrong but um, yeah this is just what I've heard and what I've discovered but if you disable a resample it'll be uh, a lot more cleaner and not exactly smoother but it'll make it look a lot more professional and a lot more uh, defined so um, if you want your quality to look a bit better than usual disable that resample um, reducing the interlace flicker I have no idea what this does but do it anyway because I've been told to do it by lots of different people so um, yeah you can go against me if you want and try out your stuff that you want to experiment with as much as you can as much as you want because that's what it takes from a decent editor to a professional editor and uh, of course if you follow you know professors and all that sort of stuff in unis then you're just going to be a professional edi editor straight away but it'll always put you that step forward if you experiment with the uh, unordinary and get more familiar with the program you're using so um, yeah and the maintain aspect ratio that's just going to make your when I hit OK it's going to make the preview screen be totally filled so I hit OK that maintain aspect ratio as you can see has filled it out and I'll just prove to you now that it was the maintain aspect ratio when I click it back on go back to the normal screen so 
definitely uh, have that unchecked. Now we're going to move on to the the effects. So um, as you can see, I've got real nice effects going on right here. It's all uh, juicy and the colors are everywhere. But I'm going to disable those and show you what it really looks like without them. Okay, I'm on. There we go. All right, now see, look at that. That's really bland, and it just looks real dull. And um, if you, if any of you are uh, followers of any of my um, montages or highlights or whatever, then you'll notice that my, uh, especially in Black Ops, the colors in Black Ops are far more grayscale than most games would usually be. And with these settings, it'll just make the, the colors and the saturation and all that sort of stuff just leap out and be really, um, as I've said about 20 times now, really juicy and really full of life and flavor. So um, this isn't a cooking show. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're going to get onto these right now. So you're going to hit brightness. Uh, I'll just show you how it's done first. Um, come on, plug in change. Yep. Right, so this will come up as soon as you hit that effects button. And you're going to want to check the sharpen, the saturation adjust, the color corrector secondary, make sure it's secondary, and the brightness and contrast. So once you've ticked all those, hit OK, and then they will come up the top here. So we'll move on to brightness and contrast first. So um, you're going to want to have it as, um, you can just pause the screen because I can't be bothered going through everything. But um, yeah, you're just going to want to have these settings. And when I hit this tick button, you'll see it's going a lot more darker. It's uh, you know a lot more contrast, as you can tell by the contrast bar. And uh, not sure what the contrast center is exactly, but um, anyway, it's um, yeah, it's just made it a lot more darker, a lot more, uh, a lot less light, and a lot less pointless light, as I like to call it. Like uh, if you see when I untick it. There's all those greys and stuff coming in from nowhere, so we want to get rid of those, and we want to up the contrast. And you can see already that there's a lot of color coming out from the uh, dark gray areas. So now we're going to move on to the second secondary color correction. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm pretty sure I only tampered with the top right half of it. So um, I'm just going to let you pause that and get that down. When I tick this, you should notice a small difference, but a worthy difference. As you can see there, it's defined a bit more of those greys, and it's lightened them a bit more and made them a lot more colourful. And uh, it's kind of counteracted with the higher contrast. So um, that's not the main thing, though. We're going to be moving to the saturation adjust, and this is the main. This is where you're going to get that juicy colour from. Now you can pause the screen and uh, get all these numbers down so when I tick this off right now bam that's you can see there's a lot more color there a lot more blues especially in purples it looks real good I reckon so um, of course you can experiment with all of these things as much as you want just get it perfect for you and finally the sharpen now this isn't that important but um, it like you won't even notice a difference um, if I just tick it you won't notice anything but um, yeah it just makes it um, just like the resample in the uh, properties for the video um, it just makes everything a lot more defined and a lot more professional looking and um, yeah so that's it for the track effects the uh, video effects and um, also with on that topic um, since I hit the track effects button on the uh, left hand side where all the tracks will be displayed down here when uh, I get more and more and more um, it will make the whole every single little clip I put in here it will turn that into the um, the effects that I used whereas instead of using these effects which do the same thing but only for this clip so you're going to want to um, use this if you're especially making highlights, montages, and you know stuff like that. So it gets every single clip down. Otherwise, you're just going to be there sitting there for two hours when you're finished making your highlights, montage, just putting all the effects in like a zombie. So um, also on that topic, um, the properties 
uh, how I disabled the resample, reduced interlace flicker, and unchecked maintain aspect ratio. You're going to have to do that for every single clip, unfortunately. But um, with the effects, it just makes it one thing less to do, and uh, just makes it that simpler for you guys. Um, I'm not sure if uh, anything's different about Sony Vegas Pro 10, but um, if it is and it's a lot easier for you, then uh, use it definitely. But yeah, just look out for those key words that I've said before, like the uh, resample and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, we're done with all this. Say, for example, we've totally finished our uh, our montage, our video, whatever we want. We're going to hit the Render As button, and you can also go to File, Render As, but that's annoying, so we'll just hit Render As. It'll come up here, t File Name, whatever you want. Um, save as type I just save it to Windows Media, Media Video or WMV and uh, I think that's pretty small files but I, d I don't know I'm not an expert on um, files and stuff like that but um, yeah there's a fair few things so just experiment with a couple but uh, yeah just use WMV if you trust me now the template there's a lot of different templates but we're gonna make our own so we hit custom um, this is the audio settings so you just pause the screen, get that down, and onto video. Now this is important. Um, it's mainly the same sort of stuff as we uh, had done in the preview section of the video, but um, we're going to want the video smoothness, especially on the sharpest, which is pretty obvious since we want our video to be the best quality it can be. So um, yeah, just copy down those numbers and stuff like that and then we'll move on to bitrate so I'm not 100% sure on what this exactly does but I've been told to tick internet slash LAN and type in 6 space capital M and as again I, as I said before I don't know exactly what this does but um, yeah if you trust me and uh, don't wanna have to hassle around with looking up other videos and stuff like that then type that in um, index summary is pointless because we don't really care about this because we're not professional movie makers unless you actually are in which you're getting tips from an amateur professional movie maker so um, yeah don't worry about this and project we want the video rendering quality as best my mouse just died there we go yeah we want the <laughs> video rendering quality as best and because obviously we want the best quality and um, template just so you don't have to go scrounging around this video again for all those numbers just type it in whatever you want and hit that save floppy disk and we're done okay now before you hit that save button and save it to wherever you want we're going to want to uh, hit this stretch video to fill output frame size do not letterbox tick and um, oh you don't have to tick this project uh, markers um, I just do because I can't be bothered to check out what it actually does so um, yeah but what's important is to stretch video to fill output frame size do not letterbox so what this means is um, in a lot of my videos I've rec I've noticed previously um, especially ones that had moving text the text was um, because I didn't um, do the um, right click go properties disable resample etc 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 for all my different texts um, it made it so that the text was actually not where I wanted it so um, it would be you know a bit to the left or a bit to the right or whatever the video decided it wanted to do so um, that was really annoying because some of it was in sync to the actual frame and um, yeah it just pissed me off a heap so um, what that does um, the do not letterbox is it just makes it so it's fit to the screen and um, it's mainly you need to do this because of the NTSC DV widescreen so um, yeah if anyone knows specifically about the technicalities for this option then uh, please fill me in but that's what I know so far so um, after that you're pretty much good to go so hit that save button leave it to render for an hour or so or however long your computer takes and then you are good to go so um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial, and I hope to see some epic edits from you guys in the future. 
Thanks guys, I've been R2 and I will see you later.